Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to get going here. And welcome to the second day of the uh, SAF annual meeting. Kind of uh, loosely continuing in our theme of reforestation today. Um, the morning block is kind of dedicated to uh, urban and community forestry. Um, so that, I'm looking forward to that. We have a, a fruit growing talk as well. Particularly excited. Um, and then we're going to have a break for lunch at 1130 and that's catered here. So welcome to stay and uh, we'll come back at one o'clock and Mitch will be leading up um, the general meeting so everyone can um, stay and be a part of that. Um, we have three talkers or speakers in the afternoon, Rena Miller from the commissioner's office. She's going to kind of give an overview of where the state of Alaska is and their um, talks or their process of investigating carbon offsets um, on their state forests. Um, Darren McVoy, um, visitor from Utah, and he'll uh, be doing a sabbatical from the Extension Service, um, universe, or Utah State University. Um, and Meg will be uh, kind of leading up a, a listening session for our Extension Services up here. So um, without further ado, I've got Jackson Fox um, from the Fairbanks Area Service Transportation. Um, and he's gonna talk about green infrastructure projects. And Jackson, I'll let you kind of introduce yourself further and um, you can go from here. All right, well, thank you and good morning, everybody. I actually appreciate a little bit of extra time because I've got, I've got so many slides to share, um, but I'll, I'll work through them quickly. Uh, but I, I promise I've got lots of, lots of pictures in there to, to share with you all this morning. Um, uh, uh, but as he stated, I'm Jackson Fox. Uh, the acronym for our organization is called uh, FAST Planning. And I'm the director up here, up here in Fairbanks. Um, so I'm gonna. I've got my presentation broke out into four different sections. Uh, first and foremost, I'll explain who our organization is and what we what we do and who's involved. Um, I'm gonna highlight for you all um, a new committee that we established about a year ago, which is our project enhancement committee that looks at streetscape improvements um, on the uh, on our local road improvements uh, projects that we have uh, in Fairbanks and North Pole. I'm also going to highlight for you um, our green streets plan uh, for the Fairbanks North Pole area uh, that we adopted in 2019 um, and since that date have been uh, implementing uh, some projects on the ground uh, out of that plan and uh, and I will uh, share with you a few of the projects that we've built in the last couple of years um, ones that we're working on right now uh, one project that's going to construction this this summer uh, groundbreaking will be next month in May. Um, and then uh, share with you all some of the future projects we're looking at. But um, this, really the theme of the presentation is incorporating um, landscaping and, and in particular trees uh, into, um, into the road right away um, as we develop uh, uh, projects throughout, throughout our community. Uh, so some background on our organization. Um, we are what's called a metropolitan planning organization. Um, there are two of these types of organizations in the state of Alaska, uh, one in Anchorage and uh, one in Fairbanks. Uh, we, these, uh, our organizations are federally mandated to exist uh, for any community that has a population of 50,000 or more uh, in densely settled census blocks. Uh, and, and as a result of the uh, 2020 census, uh, the Matsu area actually qualifies uh, as an urbanized area. Uh, so the Palmer and Wasilla region uh, will be standing up a metropolitan planning organization for their community um, uh, beginning this, this fall. Um, we're federally mandated to exist. Uh, however, we are also federally funded. Um, our organization receives $12 million annually uh, to invest into local road improvements. Um, we spend most of that money on city streets, uh, borough road service area roads, uh, we also do a lot of uh, bike ped uh, path connections in state DOT road rights of way, as well as we do um, all of the road improvements up at the UAF campus. So using that $12 million per year, um, we're doing uh, basically community projects on, on local roads throughout our region. And we leave DOT to fund projects on the main highway system. Um, but the, the purpose of our organization is to provide regional transportation planning and agency coordination. Um, where we bring all of our local governments to the table uh, to engage them in the transportation decision-making process with DOT. Uh, so we're engaging our two cities, the city of Fairbanks and the North Pole, as well as the Fairbanks North Star Borough um, in the conversation and decision-making process on how 
federal highway funds get spent in our area um, on, on road projects. Um, and of course, all along the way, um, we spent a lot of time engaging the public um, in that uh, transportation planning uh, process and identification of, of projects and what um, amenities will go into those go into those projects. Uh, this is the area that we uh, serve. Um, again, it's based on um, densely settled census blocks in in an urbanized area core of the borough. So it's a very small portion of the borough. It's really just our, our urban center. But as you can see here, the, the boundary for the area in which we serve includes the city limits of Fairbanks, city limits of North Pole. Um, we have the Fort Wainwright military base in the middle, um, the UAF campus uh, up on the kind of northwestern portion. And then the rest of the area is just, um, again, a small portion, small portion of the of the borough. Um, our organization, we have a policy board. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Uh, so this policy board also serves as our board of directors for the corporation. Uh, but as you can see, see here, and as I mentioned, um, you know, one of our main missions is to en engage our local governments uh, in that transportation decision-making process for how federal highway funds are spent in our area. So on our board, we have all three local mayors uh, for Fairbanks North Pole um, and the Fairbanks North Star Borough. We have two additional local government seats, one for a city council member for the city of Fairbanks and then one for a borough assembly member. And then we have two state seats, one for uh, DOT and one for the Alaska Department of en Environmental Conservation. Uh, supporting this board, we have a technical committee, uh, which is the primary advisory body to the board um, as we do our transportation planning efforts and identification of projects. And as you can see on this list, we have a, a, a fairly large committee that's made up of uh, uh, representatives from uh, various departments over at DOT, um, the City of Fairbanks Engineering Group, uh, City of North Pole, uh, the University of Alaska, and the borough actually has three seats, one for their community planning department, one for their uh, transit department, which is Max Transit, um, and then we also have a, a borough planning commission member uh, at the table, as well as uh, other agencies that are involved in transportation, uh, like the Alaska Railroad Corporation, Fort Wainwright, um, our international airport, and we also have a uh, state trooper as a public safety representative uh, on this committee. So a pretty pretty diverse group spread across, you know, uh, many of our state and local uh, governments that we have uh, have here in town to uh, be engaged in this process. And then supporting um, the technical committee and policy board, uh, we have various other committees that meet on a monthly basis. Um, I'm only going to talk about one of these here today, which is our new Project Enhancement Committee, uh, but just want to note that we do have a dedicated Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee uh, that's made up primarily of um, local interest groups and public members, a few agency representatives, uh, but advocates for bike and ped needs in our area. And then our new Project Enhancement Committee, uh, which we stood up uh, a year and a few months ago. And this is an interesting group that, uh, again, as I, as I mentioned, um, they focus on streetscape improvements and landscaping um, on road projects in which we uh, provide funding for. And this is a, a good mix of uh, engineers at the table uh, that understand how to construct, construct um, some of these streetscape improvements. Uh, we also have uh, architects and graphic designers at the table to kind of provide the vision for what the streetscape may look like. Um, but then also the other third of the committee is made up of our area maintenance managers. So the people that will inherit the things that we build. And so it's a, it's a really good balance. Again, of the folks that are um, kind of the visionaries for these streetscape improvements, uh, the folks that will end up designing those improvements, and then the folks that will inherit those improvements and have to take care of them uh, through the life of that facility. And then we also have a freight advisory committee um, and a seasonal mobility task force that's really dedicated on uh, uh, maintenance needs throughout the year. So for the new project enhancement committee, um, we stood this up in uh, January of 2022. So they've been meeting for uh, just over a year now. And when I, when I talk about streetscape improvements, um, here's the list in which they're tasked with taking a look at. And that's again, incorporating landscaping into our road projects environmental stewardship with water and air quality uh, concerns, cultural and historical plaques, vehicle and pedestrian wayfinding signs, uh, gateway features uh, to our downtown area to various neighborhoods throughout the community. Um, they take a hard look at the roadway and, 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 in, and in particular pedestrian lighting, um, especially in our downtown core, uh, any outdoor furniture, decorative fencing or artwork that may be, may be included in these projects. And then 
So as a as a road project gets funded in our area, uh, this committee takes a look at the list of, you know, what's starting in design, um, and then they get their fingers in the mix to look at what type of enhancements uh, could be that could be made for that road project that's not exclusively asphalt and uh, and concrete. Uh, and I'm going to share with you now um, one example of the very first project that this committee worked on, uh, which was the Airport Way and Cushman intersection. Uh, so this intersection's uh, in uh, downtown Fairbanks, um, kind of on the south side of downtown, but it's the main uh, entry point to downtown uh, from from Airport Way. And uh, DOT was fun is funding a project there to um, redesign that intersection with safety improvements in mind. Uh, this particular intersection has um, the highest crash rate um, in our community, highest number of fatalities and serious injuries. Um, and so there's a, they've come up with some engineering solutions to reconfigure that intersection. Uh, but again, our committee was looking at while they're designing those safety improvements, you know, what landscaping or gateway features of downtown could potentially be incorporated. Uh, so, so with that committee, they developed some uh, concepts here, as you'll see on the screen. Um, we do have a, a video that will kind of sh show you this intersection from different views there. In consideration of time, I won't go through the video, but just to share with you all um, that, you know, so in addition to the safety improvements at this intersection, um, the committee pushed really hard for uh, a gateway feature to the downtown, um, as well as uh, incorporating a lot of landscaping uh, into um, into the road right away in which uh, DOT had acquired uh, for the project. So there'll be a, um, as you can see there, a, about a six foot tall wall that says Love Fairbanks. We we call this the selfie station, uh, but behind that, um, uh, basically a small forest of uh, birch trees uh, that will be uh, put up behind that um, behind that concrete uh, retaining wall there. Um, so to make this space more open as a pass through area for pedestrians and bicyclists, uh, but also to introduce uh, some some trees back into our in, into our downtown. And as a result of this committee's work and presentation to DOT on what enhancements could, could be made with the project. Um, DOT adopted this adopted this design, this concept design that they came up with. Uh, they did hire a consultant and put to get put it put all of these improvements uh, into their plan set, and uh, they are breaking ground on the project here uh, this summer, um, and it will be completed uh, next summer. Um, so that was just that was an introduction to the project enhancement committee. Um, but my next topic is our Green Streets plan, in which we adopted in 2019. As you can see on this list here, as far as transportation planning for the Fairbanks North Pole area, uh, we do put together the 20 year long range plan for our community. It, this is a, a 20 year plan that shows all of the projects for the transportation network, uh, and not, not just the road system, but also the uh, bicycle and pedestrian amenities. Uh, but this is a combination of the projects that we fund through fast planning with the $12 million allocation we get each year, uh, in, addition, in addition to all of the projects that DOT intends to fund, which is on the order of 40 to $50 million in highway improvements uh, in our area. So we have a comprehensive, again, long range transportation plan uh, for our area that we develop and update uh, every four year cycle. Uh, we also have a short range funding plan for all the projects that are listed in that long range plan that covers a four year span. Um, a public participation plan, uh, and we also have uh, some supplemental plans where we look at uh, different aspects of our uh, transportation system and different user groups. So we do have a dedicated non motorized plan that we adopted in 2021. Uh, we've, we have a freight mobility plan for our area that we adopted in 2019. Uh, we have safe routes to school plans for every elementary and middle school uh, in our area. And then you see our Green Streets plan, um, a road service area expansion plan, and then uh, a road rail crossing reduction plan. So we do look at all aspects of our transportation network. Uh, but I thought uh, for, for purposes of uh, this conference that uh, our Green Streets plan would be a good one to highlight for you. Um, and here's the, the cover page and some of the graphics that are included in that plan, uh, but this was prepared for us by AWR Engineering out of Anchorage. And uh, we um, adopted this plan in 2019 um, after the work that they uh, completed on it. And really what it does is it, it, it um, kind of cherry picked uh, 10 roads in our community 
where there was good opportunity to incorporate green infrastructure uh, into roadways. And it's not just for landscaping, it's also for uh, stormwater management and, uh, and water quality concerns. So you'll, if you look through our plan and it is posted to our website, um, you'll see on a lot of roadways, uh, bioretention planners um, are proposed for the, for the design of these roadways uh, to accept the runoff a stormwater runoff from the roadway uh, into that bioretention planter to allow some water to infiltrate in the ground, but then filter out uh, contaminants before that water eventually goes into our storm drain system, which empties into our uh, river, which is the Chena River through town. Uh, but also incorporating street trees uh, with tree wells uh, in the in the uh, sidewalk. So um, again, through this through this planning effort here, we've identified ten. Uh, roadways in our community between Fairbanks and North Pole uh, that are, we consider as opportunities to try to get to convert these streets from traditional concrete and asphalt into a green street by providing uh, some of these uh, open spaces for uh, stormwater, but also uh, landscaping and beautification of those roadways. Um, so now I'm going to go into some of the, the projects that we have uh, built over the last few years, um, uh, projects that we're working on right now. Uh, I'm specifically, I'm going to highlight for you uh, Cushman Street, which has been constructed, um, and then highlight for you uh, Fifth Avenue that uh, is going to construction this summer, breaking ground uh, next month, and then a future project on uh, Lacey Street um, in, our, in our downtown core and how we're uh, working in some of these green streets elements uh, into these downtown street projects. So the first one here, Cushman Street, uh, which is constructed, um, and, and this is a picture showing what it looks like uh, present day here. Um, as you can see through the road corridor, we've incorporated planters um, with spruce trees in them that are um, uh, manicured, so kind of like a little bonsai tree. Um, uh, along the corridor, and then uh, every other spacing there is a is a tree well uh, with birch trees in it. And one of the important aspects of not just kind of beautification and incorporating trees uh, into this roadway, um, that the new pedestrian lighting, the new trees, the new planters uh, provide a, a buffer for pedestrians as they walk down the sidewalk. It provides some separation between them and the vehicles that are uh, driving through that corridor. So it just feels much more comfortable and, and safe. Um, and also with the with the birch trees that you see there, I'll show you kind of a closer up view, but each of those birch trees has a electrical outlet at the base. And so that uh, uh, basically twinkle lights uh, can be strung up on those trees during the during the winter months to, um, uh, to provide uh, an even different and more illuminated look uh, during the winter. Um, what Cushman Street was before and what it is now is, is quite a drastic change. The picture on the left there, it shows you that um, Cushman Street was three lanes of traffic with very narrow sidewalks. Uh, the sidewalks were generally about five feet wide, some places a little bit, little bit skinnier. Um, but when, we, when this project was uh, in design, uh, we hired a traffic engineer to look at this roadway uh, and see if the three lanes were actually needed. And through their modeling, they determined that the roadway will actually function just fine uh, with the number of vehicles that travel along it each day with just two lanes of traffic. So the idea here was is to remove one of the traffic lanes um, to widen out the, to provide the space to widen out those sidewalks uh, to get those um, street trees and uh, planters um, into the, the landscape of the, of the roadway. So you'll see the conversion left to right there of uh, we did eliminate one traffic lane uh, to provide that additional space for the uh, amenities that you see. Um, just a couple pictures here, the construction effort. This is the main drag through our downtown. So of course it was very uh, disruptive uh, during, during the construction effort, um, but the businesses have uh, very much appreciated the improvements um, that, uh, that were installed. So in addition to uh, this, the street trees and these tree wells and the planters. Um, we also incorporated new pedestrian lighting. That's what those kind of tubes look like um, between the between the planters there. So there's pedestrian lighting throughout the corridor. Um, at nighttime in the winter, this whole roadway kind of looks like a runway strip. It's very, very well lit uh, through our dark winter months. Um, we also incorporated uh, decorative um, roadway lighting, as you can see those gooseneck lights at, at each of the intersections. Um, 
and incorporated some of those colors as well into the actual traffic signals. And then in addition to that, we, we put in um, a, a network of wayfinding signs and a map of downtown to point people to different uh, destinations uh, throughout downtown and in different areas where there was parking lots adjacent to um, uh, the, the back of sidewalk, uh, we did incorporate some uh, decorative fencing as well. So again, these are all as a result of the efforts of um, uh, individuals that are um, now serving on our project enhancement committee to, to take, it to, take a look at a, a roadway that was just traditionally just asphalt and concrete and, and try to provide some amenities uh, into the project budget. Um, on Cushman Street, we reconstructed 12 blocks of the roadway, so not the entire length, but about 90% of the length of this road. And throughout those 12 blocks, <clears throat> we installed 80 uh, tree wells with birch trees in them. And then between those tree wells, 120 planters uh, throughout, the, throughout the corridor. And the, um, as you can see on the bottom graphic there, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the tree well design. Um, but as you can see here, there's a, um, there's a, a, a tree, tree well frame that's made out of concrete uh, that's uh, set into the ground, uh, kind of like a, and it looks a little bit like an underground bridge, but it provides the structural integrity to uh, put soil in there and then put a tree grate uh, over the top. And then if uh, uh, sidewalk um, uh, tractors that remove snow on the sidewalk, um, th this will be able to hold the weight of those uh, tractors as they uh, clear snow during the, during the winter months. And surrounding those, that kind of tree grate and frame are silva cells, uh, which some of you may or may not be familiar with, but some of these have been put in uh, sidewalks in Anchorage. Uh, the best way to describe a silva cell is it looks like um, underground milk crates, uh, but it provides space around, if you look at the top right uh, figure there, it's, it's a plan view, but around that tree grate and frame, there are uh, these basically large milk crates that are underneath the sidewalks that are filled with uh, topsoil that um, allows allows you to put soil in there that's relatively you know uncompacted uh, as, as opposed to the, the soil and gravel that's compacted underneath the sidewalk um, and it allows space for the roots uh, to expand out uh, below uh, uh, the sidewalk uh, where the tree needs because um, our the trees up here in Fairbanks with our permafrost, um, we have, they have a very shallow root system, uh, typically in the first you know, foot or two of the soil uh, that spreads out kind of far, far and wide. So this is what has led to the um, really low mortality rate of these street trees. Again, we put in 80 of these along, the, um, along that 12 block corridor. And in, after the first year of, of being in, there was just a couple that had uh, died and had to be had to be replaced. So we've had very high survivability of these, uh, thanks to the the silva cells that are underneath the sidewalks and providing that space. Um, and again, as I showed in a picture before, as part of this project, we uh, incorporated uh, wayfinding signs to point uh, both pedestrians and vehicles to different destinations through our throughout our our downtown. It's helpful for uh, visitors to our community. Um, also as part of this project, uh, not part of the project funding, but separately, we were able to secure some uh, grant funding to the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation, their Alaska Clean Water Actions Program, to install green infrastructure projects on private property adjacent to the road corridor. Um, so we were able to incorporate uh, uh, landscaping uh, into, um, uh, starting on the left there, our main uh, transit center is right on this, right on this roadway. So we were able to do some landscaping and replace some concrete with permeable pavers um, leading to and from that transit center. And then in the middle, uh, there's, a, there's a hair salon on this roadway here that also was predominantly concrete on the storefront. So we were able to replace that with grass and infiltration planters um, and permeable pavers as the, as the um, you know, connecting pedestrian walkway uh, to, that, to that business. And then uh, on the north side of the project, uh, down at the at the riverfront, uh, we're able to do a riparian restoration uh, project on that riverbank, and uh, inst actually install a new non-motorized uh, boat launch at that at that location uh, with this with this funding. So all all said and done, with that 
project, which was uh, very unique unique for us. Uh, we did get a lot of notoriety out of it. Um, it was published in Roads and Bridges magazine as a you know uh, promoting the complete street or green street um, uh, look or, or redesign of roadways. And then we also received an award from the American Planning Association as uh, one of the great streets in America um, in, uh, 20, in 2018. So now I'm gonna switch to a couple of projects, uh, Fifth Avenue, which go, is going to construction uh, here next month, and then a future project on Lacey Street. Um, but what I'm showing on this map here is, is these two particular streets, which are programmed with funding for reconstruction over the next few years, one of the biggest things that we pay attention to is, is roadways with very low traffic volumes. So as you see there on Fifth Avenue, that 748 num uh, number, uh, that's the number of vehicles that average, average annual daily traffic. So the average number of vehicles that travel on Fifth Avenue um, each day. Um, and that's a very low number for uh, our, a downtown street. And Fifth Avenue is, is currently a, a one-way street, but it has two lanes of traffic. So when we see these lo low numbers, we look for opportunities like, well, maybe we could, you know, like we did on Cushman, eliminate one of the traffic lanes and um, and incorporate some of these, you know, streetscape improvements into that project to provide more amenities for not just for bikes and bicyclists and pedestrians on the roadway, but again, to incorporate some of that landscaping into the, into the road project with that uh, underutilized space, having the two lanes on the roadway. And then on Lacey Street, um, also very low, vehicle uh, vehicle volumes um, on that roadway. And you can see parallel to that is uh, Noble Street, which has much higher traffic volumes. Um, Lacey Street does have a dead end uh, to the south of this graphic here, uh, but that's that's the reason why uh, the, the uh, vehicle volumes are very uh, low out there. So in uh, looking at Lacey Street, um, there have been ideas from our project enhancement committee to like, well, maybe we could actually abandon some blocks of Lacey Street um, and convert those to a new linear park for downtown, uh, similar to what you see in Anchorage with the linear park, at least down near Ninth Avenue. So um, in, in any event, as these projects are programmed for funding, we, we consider these kind of low-lying fruit uh, to to try to dream up some enhancements to these to these roadways, like, like what we did on uh, Cushman Street. So for Fifth Avenue, um, a couple of years ago, we pulled together um, a large stakeholder group of businesses throughout the corridor on Fifth Avenue, um, as well as our local governments and members that are now serving on our project enhancement committee uh, to take kind of a fresh look at fresh look at uh, Fifth Avenue and what can be done out there. Um, Fifth Avenue was one of the projects that was in our listed on our Green Street plan, and uh, the recommendations that came out of that, as you can see at the top, was. Uh, narrowing the, the roadway down to one lane, just as we described, but maintaining some on-street parking, and then uh, installing uh, a bioretention planter on one side of the street and street trees on the on the uh, other side of the street. And, and as you can see here, a kind of a zoomed-in view of the of a cross-section of what that bioinfiltration planter looks like. Um, it does incorporate. There's a curb cut, so the the roadway runoff, the water would go into that. Uh, um, uh, into that landscaped uh, area there. And then uh, water percolates down through the soil and then gets down to a, um, a drain rock uh, level uh, where the water is, uh, after it's kind of filtered through that soil, uh, goes into a uh, pipe, which leads to our storm drain to empty into the river to kind of clean up some of that, that water and some of the contaminants that are in the runoff from the, from the roadway. So here's a, here's a graphic showing you what the existing condition is of Fifth Avenue as it is today right now. Again, it's two lanes of traffic, one-way street uh, with on-street parking on both sides. And uh, due to the low volume of vehicle traffic, um, again, the proposal was to eliminate one of those traffic lanes uh, to provide additional space for, for these, these amenities. And this was the concept that was developed of that stakeholder group process uh, to eliminate that lane and, um, and incorporate these green street ideas into the project. Um, through a lot of uh, conversations with the stakeholder group and the area maintenance managers, which maintain the street, um, we're not designing it exactly how the concepts were presented in the Green Streets plan, uh, but we're still getting all of those elements. So that infiltration planner is actually going to be at the back of sidewalk and uh, through um, uh, four-inch pipes 
uh, runoff from this roadway will flow directly underneath the sidewalk and then drop into that uh, green strip at the back of sidewalk there. And so we will kind of all in one, we'll have, um, we'll have a green strip uh, with uh, tree wells uh, within that and some landscaping, some bushes and, uh, and uh, benches for people to, to sit, eat lunch, you know, during the workday, uh, things of that nature. But we're also incorporating that new uh, pedestrian lighting that we put on Cushman Street uh, on this roadway, roadway as well. Uh, but it was very important to the stakeholder group to maintain uh, some on-street parking. Uh, so that was left in the project. Uh, but again, we had a big win there by eliminating one of the traffic lanes to provide this additional, additional space. And this is just another view of what that what that will look like uh, by the end of by the end of the summer. And this project breaks ground again next next month. All right. So the next project, this is one that um, that we're still kind of in a planning phase for, uh, but we'll go to construction over the next few years. Uh, this is on Lacey Street, where um, again this idea came up that well, due to low uh, vehicle volume on Lacey Street, maybe we could potentially close some of these blocks and uh, you know, create a new linear park in, uh, in downtown. Not for the full length of Lacey Street, but for uh, a certain set of blocks that are, um, that are underutilized. So for this, we also stood up a stakeholder group and had meetings um, for a period of, of almost six months to take, a, to take a look at this and come up with some ideas. And this Lacey Street was also one of those roadways that was included in our Green Streets plan. Um, and in, within that, one of the leading ideas for Lacey Street um, was, in fact, to kind of close it down for a bicycle and pedestrian corridor. So the, the top figure there shows you what it looks like today, and then the bottom um, uh, shows you something that it could become. So it, not just including trees and other landscaping features, but making it a dedicated throughway for bicyclists and pedestrians uh, in downtown. Uh, but to kind of as we went to the stakeholder group process, we did a lot of public engagement uh, for um, throughout the whole community, not just the downtown, uh, you know, businesses and folks that live in downtown. Um, but we put together a, a survey and got about 700 responses throughout the community on different alternatives for that roadway. So you can see from left to right, um, we asked folks that they wanted to keep Lacey Street in its, in its existing configuration um, as a two-way, two-lane roadway. Uh, with relatively narrow sidewalks, um, the option, the next option, number two, there uh, would be simply to basically keep it in as an existing configuration, but narrow up the the travel lanes and incorporate uh, bike lanes uh, into into the roadbed. And then in the the middle there, uh, the bike corridor concept would be to convert it from a two-way street down to a one-way street, um, one-way one-lane street, and uh, put on the for half of the roadway, basically turn it into a multi-use corridor, um, but separating out bicyclists from uh, pedestrians so there's no user conflicts. And then uh, the blended corridor uh, is very similar to the to the bike corridor, where, where we would narrow the roadway down to one lane, one way, um, but it would be more of a like a multi-use path uh, where bicyclists and pedestrians share um, a path uh, with a lot of landscaping incorporated. Uh, going as a main um, route north-south through downtown. And then the last option there was the linear park concept where you you close certain blocks on Lacey Street and turn it into a linear park that has um, amenities for bicyclists, pedestrians, but also a lot more landscaping and it has more of a park feel uh, where uh, people um, could hang out and enjoy the outdoors uh, uh, surrounded by greenery. And what we were surprised with when we put out this survey, and again, there was about 700 uh, or so survey responses to this. Um, it, was very, it was one of our most successful surveys in getting feedback from the public. Um, we asked them to rank uh, each of those five concepts that I just presented by giving them between one and five stars. So, and one star says, I don't like it, and five stars says, I love it. And as you can see there on the left, for the existing condition, you can see that um, uh, the majority of respondents, 75% of them, um, did not want Lacey Street to stay in its current configuration. And then you get all the way over there on the right for the linear park concept, and 65% or 64% of the respondents uh, gave it five stars to go ahead and close some of those blocks for, from vehicles and turn it, turn it into a linear park. 
And uh, so he, I'm going to show you a couple concepts here for the blended corridor and then a linear park. Um, but as you can see here for the blended corridor, again, this would be uh, converting the street or eliminating a lane to convert the street to a one lane one way. Um, have a landscape strip through the middle and then a multi use path um, on the on the side. Uh, but then for the linear linear park idea, um, you would have a dedicated uh, space for bicycles and pedestrians, uh, but you would close this this uh, certain blocks on this roadway entirely to entirely to vehicles. And um, but also with you know with year round elements in mind. So um, just as we did on Christian Street and as what we will be doing on Fifth Avenue, um, really lighting up that whole corridor with pedestrian lighting so that it's, um, it's, so it's winter, winter friendly and there are um, amenities and it's an inviting space on a year-round year -round basis. And uh, on our website at, at, at fastplanning.us backslash Lacey Street, um, we have all of the recordings of our stakeholder group meetings, all the concepts that we created, um, and there are uh, a, a series of like 360 degree views uh, that you can click on and pan around so that the public can kind of experience these, what these concepts might look like in, in, um, in a virtual world, because um, it's hard to, to kind of see it on the ground based on some of the things I'm describing, but these, these graphics really um, help portray to the public uh, some of these ideas that we came up with. So to, to follow on with Fifth Avenue and Lacey Street, we did, we did do one more thing. Um, this was last summer, uh, but in coordination with those two projects, we applied for um, a grant from Bloomberg Philanthropies for their asphalt art initiative. And the idea was is to um, paint murals on these roadways to show how that Space from eliminating lanes could be rededicated to other to other uses. Um, this is a program that's about been going on for about three years now with Bloomberg Philanthropies all across the U.S. Uh, they have expanded this now to Europe, and uh, this year they're expanding it to Canada and Mexico as well. Uh, but the whole purpose of the grant, again, is to put murals on the ground, painted on the ground, on the asphalt, on the concrete sidewalks, put murals on the ground. To, to show people how these spaces might be um, or could be converted for, uh, for other uses or other users or to highlight safety issues with roadways. So it's something that's become increasingly popular throughout the U.S., uh, but last year we were selected for an award. Uh, at, so we were one of 26 communities throughout the U.S. that was, that was awarded this. But as you can see in the graphics on the bottom page there, we selected two blocks of Lacey Street to paint the entire roadway um, as, as not necessarily painting it as a linear park, painting trees in the roadway, uh, doing something a little bit more artistic with murals, but showing how that space could be rededicated for um, um, a linear park as opposed to dedicating it to vehicles. And then for Fifth Avenue, um, we painted murals uh, on both the north and south sides of Fifth Avenues. And the murals go from back of sidewalk um, across the entire sidewalk and then we painted the space where the on-street parking is so that when people drive down Fifth Avenue, it feels much more narrow and it feels like a, you know, one lane, one way roadway. And the purpose of these two efforts was to um, not only provide some kind of beautification of downtown and a fun project for the community to get involved in, uh, but again, to, to continue that conversation with the community on, you know, what we would consider would be a drastic change in use of those, those roadways. And as people, after our project was done last summer on Fifth Avenue in particular, when people would drive down Fifth Avenue, you could you could feel how you know uh, narrow it would be, and uh, with just one lane as opposed to two. And we got a lot of feedback like, "Oh, it's yeah, it's fine. It works just fine as a one one lane, uh, one way street." And uh, and it it just gathered some more project support. So um, and I'll show you. Um, so I'll show you a few pictures here for Fifth Avenue and the murals that we painted, and then I'll next I'll show you show you Lacey Street. Um, but we did have uh, about 100 volunteers help with us um, over a three-day period. It was I, I believe it was the first weekend in June, and so this is Fifth Avenue where they're uh, prepping the surfaces and beginning to paint the murals um, on the roadway again, both on the north side and the south side of the street. And uh, here's some pictures of kind of the, the final um, uh, the final product here uh, for these asphalt art murals. 
Um, the Nothing Gold Can Stay is a Robert Frost poem, um, but uh, we selected four different artist teams, and then we get we got 100 volunteers to help them paint these large murals. Um, but you can see you can see in these pictures here how we kind of started it back a sidewalk. We painted murals all the way out into the on-street parking space, uh, so that just the center of the roadway uh, would be left open to kind of narrow that uh, for vehicle drivers as they drive through to kind of feel how the roadway would function after it was constructed. And uh, and here's kind of the, the other end of it there. And then <clears throat> and then for Lacey Street where the community seems to have the strongest interest in a um, linear park. Uh, we painted the entire roadway from back of sidewalk all the way to the to the center line and under on two blocks. So one block um, you can see on Lacey Street between uh, uh, 10th and 11th Avenue. Um, this was just a big you know quilt basically that was painted on the roadway by uh, Summer Han and her her crew, a very well-known artist uh, throughout Alaska. Um, and so she, she painted a quilt on the roadway there. And then between 11th and 12th Avenue, which is adjacent to our, um, our community garden in downtown, which uh, provides a lot of the vegetables for uh, our um, local soup kitchen, um, uh, they did a kind of farmer's market uh, theme on that, on that roadway. So, and again, the idea was is to paint the full roadway as if it wasn't usable for vehicles. And, and I'll tell you, vehicle drivers were very reluctant to drive over this beautiful artwork. Uh, so, you know, it, it turned the conversation into, well, yeah, what if these two blocks were closed and this was a, a small linear park in downtown? You know, how would you feel about that? And again, we got a lot of uh, good feedback from the public that, yeah, this is this is probably a good idea for um, a change to this change to this roadway that uh, would be acceptable to the to the general public. And so we've been working on those. The next street that we're going to take a hard look at is um, Barnett Street in downtown, which uh, actually connects to Fifth Avenue and parallels uh, Cushman Street, which we've already reconstructed. Uh, but this is a roadway that has four lanes of vehicle traffic right now. But based on engineering studies, it really only needs two lanes of traffic. So we have a lot of opportunity here to not only include landscaping and street trees uh, into that road project, uh, but also what we call a uh, protected or a, a contra bike lane. So a two way bike lane dedicated north south through downtown um, in that project. So this is just a concept that was developed a few years ago, but we haven't actually had stakeholder group meetings on it yet to kind of flesh these concepts out further. Uh, but this is the next one that we have in mind uh, to kick off uh, over the next next year um, as we uh, consider providing funding uh, for those for those roadway improvements. And uh, that was my presentation. Um, I put this picture here at the end just to to, to share with you all um, a recent project in Fairbanks uh, that DOT was in charge of a new roundabout and um, <clears throat> how sometimes projects are built and if our committee and our organization was involved. Um, we could make them a lot better than what you see there on the screen, as opposed to putting some riprap or boulders in the middle of a roundabout, how we can incorporate, you know, landscaping into that, uh, that center feature there. Um, so we're trying to, you know, stay away again from the, con you know, hundred percent coverage of concrete and asphalt um, on our, on our roadway projects and had some, a couple, couple, you know, good successes here locally and uh, future projects in the queue to uh, convert some of these roadways. But, um, Thank you for your time this morning, and I'm I'm happy to uh, uh, answer any uh, questions that uh, that you all may have in the time remaining. Thanks, Jackson. Thanks for your time. <clears throat> any questions, Ken? Yeah, just curious. Uh, what sort of uh, thought went into snow removal? Just out of curiosity. So, uh, Cushman Street is. Um, <clears throat> so I'll yeah. I'll, I'll answer that with a response on Cushman Street and also Fifth Avenue. So Cushman Street is one where um, the sidewalks behind the tree walls and planters are wide enough to get a um, an articulated tractor through there to plow snow. Um, however, there is it is quite labor intensive to shovel the snow by hand um, uh, between those uh, tree walls and planters. And so when we have a um, say a one foot snow event uh, here in town. Our public works department estimated it took 17 to 18 um, uh, labor hours uh, to fully clear those sidewalks, considering those amenities. Um, 
but through the through the mayor's office as well as the public works director, uh, despite the fact that it increased um, maintenance effort in time, uh, the improvements that we put on uh, Cushman Street were still worth it because there's so um, there's so much support from the community for that and so much support from the businesses that are on that corridor for those improvements um, in in front there. So, um, however, when we started designing Fifth Avenue, um, let me go back to the Fifth Avenue project here to show you a graphic. So on on Fifth Avenue, uh, considering the you know the large maintenance effort that has been required on Cushman Street, um, in working with the city's public works department, again we moved that landscaping strip, uh, the bio bioretention uh, uh, planner, um, and the street trees to the back of the sidewalk so that um, it would kind of streamline and reduce their maintenance effort um, on that sidewalk and it avoids some of those problems that were created on uh, on Cushman Street. So this is something that we, you know, we compromised on and didn't necessarily follow our Green Streets plan, but we modified the design to still get what we want, but put it um, in a location that was a little bit more maintenance friendly. Thank you. That answer your question, Ken? Yeah, just one other question uh, regarding those murals. I'm just wondering what the lifespan of that paint is, and if you thought about how, uh, like, how long will that last, and uh, when you would have to potentially freshen it up or redo it, or, or just the thoughts on on that. Yeah. So the the paint that we um, that we purchased uh, for these asphalt art murals is traffic marking paint. So it is, the, it is the same paint that's used to stripe roadways each summer, um, which is which most folks know it only lasts a year or two on the roadway, even though it's, you know, it's, it, the paint is um, designed to be put on asphalt and concrete. Um, we painted these last summer on Fifth Avenue, understanding that this whole roadway would be reconstructed this summer. So the murals just had to last one year, but beginning next month, they're going to be removing all of that pavement and those sidewalks uh, to put in these infrastructure improvements. So those murals go away on Fifth Avenue. And so and that was that was kind of intentional that these things are going to look really nice for a year, but then next year the roadway will be reconstructed and there's there won't be any maintenance of the murals required. On Lacey Street, though, uh, funding for reconstruction of Lacey Street, as you see in these pictures here, um, that funding will be a few years out and um, we're gonna the snow is just starting to melt here in Fairbanks we're still still in winter mode yet it's not quite spring yet um, but as soon as uh, Lacey Street gets uncovered we're going to take a look at the condition of those murals and uh, we may have an effort this summer to touch them back up if they look semi-decent um, and uh, we can accomplish that over, over a period of a weekend because we do have a lot of leftover paint from last summer. Uh, but the other idea is, is that if it starts to look really poor and there's not a lot of interest in trying to kind of revitalize those murals, uh, then we'll have the city run their street sweeper over it and we'll sandblast the, the paint off. So, um, but yeah, these, these murals on roadways, especially they get driven over by vehicles um, are not expected to last more than one or two years. Thanks, any questions? I commend your efforts. Uh, you're speaking to a group of foresters here. We got to wonder how come all the same species of trees, all birch trees and all spruce trees, that seems like uh, setting yourself up for trouble in the future. Well, we, we selected birch and spruce um, just because we the, we know that the survivability is high. The, the trees that were uh, planted on Cushman and will be planted um, with these next couple projects moving forward, um, they're all harvested north of the Alaska range, so they're already adapted to our climate. And uh, again, we've had very high survivability. So um, in any event, that was we figured it was a safe option. So that's what was that was that's what we moved forward with. Any more questions? Online. I don't think we do. All right. Well, thank you, Jackson. Um, that was I, I love the visualizations of graphics you had in there. I think foresters might need to use some more graphics trying to explain things.
Well, you're very welcome. I'm yeah, glad to have the opportunity to present to you all this morning. Thank you.